March 12, 1991. We are uh, making another interview today, doing another interview of the series of interviews of commemorating the 50th anniversary of Pearl Harbor and the start of World War II. Uh, this series is including, uh, we've tried to include here men or persons of Montgomery County who, served, who were in the armed services during World War II. Uh, these uh, tapes are being, today our cameraman is Mike Hall, who is a curator of Plain Plates. Uh, and this, these tapes are being made on behalf of the Montgomery County Historical Society with the cooperation of the uh, American Legion, local American Legion Post and the Veterans of Foreign War Post. Uh, the tapes, and I hope that our interviewee today understands this, are going to be the property of the Montgomery County Historical Society, who reserves all rights to any reproduction of them. But we hope maybe to be able to copyright them. Uh, and uh, I want to mention a couple of other people who have been uh, active in this. Uh, Ed Miller, who was a member of the uh, American Legion Post here, uh, Byron Cox Post, and also the Veterans of Foreign War Post. Uh, my name is Bob Wordley. I'm representing the Historical Society. Now, another person who's been very helpful to us, who's been able to help set these up, has been Claire Chamberlain of, of the American Legion Post. Uh, today, our uh, person being interviewed is uh, Ed Finley of Crawfordsville, and I'm going to start out here with a few, uh, get him off on a few introductory remarks about himself, and then I'm going to turn this, uh, this interview over to Claire Chamberlain. Claire was in the Navy during the war, and Ed here was in the Navy, and I think they understand that their terminology better than I would, who was in the, who was in the Army. And, uh, but I want to, uh, Mike Hall and I were talking about as we came over here, that uh, when you two fellows, when you start talking and you use these, you start using these Navy terms, I hope that you'll stop and, and tell us about what abbreviations and that sort of thing so that we people who are not familiar with the Navy know what you're talking about. Uh, so let me start out, uh, Ed, uh, give us your date of birth first. May the 27th, 1924, in Indianapolis, Indiana. And uh, when did you first come to Montgomery County? I, probably two years later, I imagine I was two years, we moved down to New Market. And what was your father in business here? What was no, he was a farmer then. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, well, I assume then you lived here for the, you've lived here for the rest of your life. I moved to Ladoga in 1930. And I stayed there until I got married in 48 and then moved to Crawford. So. And what was your occupation when you were living in Ladoga? R.R. Donnelly. So. When did you first go, go to work for Donnelly? Oh, 1942. That was about the time when, it, just about the beginning of the war. I was a junior in high school. I worked between my junior and senior year in 1942. And uh, how did you happen to get into the service? They drafted me. <laughs> and they gave my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Walter Spencer and those Yeah, Walter Spencer and my friends. Uh, did, uh, uh, did you uh, choose? Did you get a chance to choose what branch of the service? No, they just sent they you. They put me in the navy. And uh, where did you enter the service? Where was it? Right here in Crawfordsville. Or? Yeah, I was drafted to here, and I swore in on the courthouse steps in Indianapolis on the highest sailor program. Uh -huh. Now, uh, you say that uh, uh, you got married after the war. After the war. 1948. Uh, you still married to the same woman? Yes. Who was your, what was your wife's name? Martha Ingersoll. Ingersoll. Mm -hmm. uh, and where was she from? Newmarket. Uh, now, uh, how many children? Do you have children? Three. And uh, 
Where are they and who are they? Well, Debbie is my oldest. She works at the library. Here in Carpenter? Yes. And my, other, my first son is uh, works for General Electric in Maryland. Well, he, works in, in, he lives in Maryland. He works in Virginia. Then Scott is my last one. He works in Dodgers. Now, uh, your, um, your, your daughter is, what's her married name? Is she got Barry. Uh, Debbie Barry. Barry. Okay. Uh, now, you started to work for Donnelly's uh, way back in 42 before you went into the service. And when did you go into the service? What was the date? May the 28th, 1943. And uh, tell us about your uh, boot camp and reception and all that. If you... Went to Great Lakes and spent seven weeks in boot camp. And it was a rush job then because they were setting out the new battleships, the old battleships in Bremerton and they needed Navy personnel, I guess. Because uh -huh. they only spent it took seven weeks. Uh -huh. And uh, were you, uh, uh, after the seven weeks, uh, well, tell us a little bit about uh, boot boot camp. A lot of us had I went to uh, basic training. I suppose that boot camp was about the same thing, but tell us a little bit about well, that. Well, you go out and take exercise and go to eat, and uh, once in a while they marched over the main side for, we had to go out on the boats, the whale boats, out on the lake, and uh, we never get the outdoor range. We got the indoor range, but they, they just thrashed us through. We had just the basic drilling and uh -huh. And uh, were any of the fellows that, when you went into the service, when you left from Crawfordville, did they break this group up? And did you see any of those fellows after that? It was 12 of us went to boot camp together. And did they stick together all during the war? Five of us. Uh, are they still around? Yes. Who, who were those five fellows? Well, they're... Donald McCoy from Ladoga. Now he's not around. He died in '47. Mm -hmm. Then there's Lee White Cotton, which is the druggist here in town, and Dick Kenyon, which is retired from Donnelly, who lived down Bar Street, and Woody Ferguson. He went in. He lives at Russellville now. What about the other fellows? Did you, did you leave them after boot camp, or uh, some of them went to trade school, and mm -hmm. some of them went to different places. Uh, Tony Black used to work at the post office. He went someplace. And yeah. Now, you still have reunions of your group. Oh, our ship does. Our ship does. And do you go to those reunions? I haven't for several years, mm -hmm. but I used to. Yeah. And uh, what uh, what have you done since you've been with Donnelly's ever since the war? Uh, when you were drafted, uh, how long had you been working at Donnelly's? Well, I wasn't because I graduated out of high school and got drafted out of high school. I mean, right. Well, in fact, I got drafted for high school and they let me graduate and then I went right in then. Did you go to Crawfordville High School? No. Ladoga. Oh, Ladoga. Okay. Uh, now, uh, uh, you, uh, okay. uh, after you, uh, during the service, what was your rank or started out, I suppose, as what do they call them in the in the Navy? I'm just a seaman. A seaman. Apprentice seaman. Apprentice seaman. And, and you uh, get the seaman, then you got, I got the seaman first class, and that's for the land. All right. You know, uh, Ed, I think at this point, I'm going to turn this interview over to Claire Chamberlain standing over there, and I'm going to ask him to take take over, because he knows a lot more about the Navy than I do. Claire, I'm going to step aside here and let you. All right. Go ahead. Thank you, Bob. Good afternoon, Ed. Good morning. I have to come down to Lane Place to see my neighbor. That's right, that's right. Ed is my neighbor out in Pleasant Meadows and a very good neighbor. And we've shared some of these experiences uh, of being in the Navy. And uh, uh, to use a term, uh, Ed has really been there. And he's going to have an interesting session here for you this afternoon. Uh, we were talking about boot camp uh, Ed, up in Great Lakes, and uh, you were there in May, I believe you went in in May of 1943. Do you remember your boot camp number? 398, I think. Well, I've got the picture. 
in uh, 19 in September of that same year, my boot camp company was 1450. So that gives you an idea of how they were putting it through. We was the next to last regiment down in Green Bay. In fact, there wasn't even any grass down there. Right. I do remember, remember where Green Bay was. I was in Green Bay. Yeah, that's a long ways. I was in Green Bay and uh, uh, went through a very, I'm sure we went through the same thing as what you're talking about. Uh, did you get a leave after uh, boot camp? Seven days. Did, and you came back to Crawfordsville? We come back and seven days later we went back to Great Lakes and we went Mainside and three days later we went on a troop train for the West Coast. I see. Did you uh, spend uh, some time, uh, and I heard Bob mention a while ago, we used some shortened terms. Did you spend any time in OGU, which was outgoing unit? Not at the Great Lakes? Just uh, three days, that's it. I see. We just got in there and got our gear and was over on the main side, and next thing we knew, we was on a train to Bremerton, Washington. Bremerton, Washington. And what did you do in Bremerton? Well, we went there and uh, we was in the receiving barracks and uh, they went down and pulled some cable on West Virginia to California and about three, four weeks later we got transferred to the Enterprise. So yeah, then on out we went down and worked on the Enterprise. Now was the Enterprise a new ship or no, had it been? No, it had been out there ever since the war started. I see. First time it was back. I see. And. Uh, you took your sea bag at that time, and did you have to carry it up on the carry it up the uh, the ladder to the uh, which is the up, stairs? Uh, went up the gangplank and carried that up. You know, after after the, they brought us aboard because they was outfitting, and we didn't go aboard right away because we had to go down and help get her ready to go to sea. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, once they got her ready, why we went out for a trial run and I see. Got demagnetized. And uh -huh. uh, then when did you head out and where did you go first uh, from Bremerton? We left Bremerton on uh, Halloween night and we took six days and went into Pearl Harbor. That was in 1943. Right. Mm -hmm. Did you go into actual Pearl Harbor there right. at Hawaii? Right. Could you see the debris right. uh, from the uh, Jap attack there? They were Tell just, us a little bit about how that looked. Well, uh, of course, the Arizona was down. They were just bringing up the Oklahoma, because, you know, she was capsized. Mm -hmm. And they were just bringing her up. Now, really, that's all the damage you could see outside the target battleship Utah was still on her side on the other side of the Fort Island. I see. And she stayed over there the whole war on mm -hmm. her side. Mm -hmm. By the way, that was where the Enterprise was supposed to uh, hooked up that morning. The morning of the Jap attack. It was supposed to have been in there on a Saturday, mm -hmm. but the heavy seas slowed them up and they didn't get in till Sunday, and uh, that was where she was supposed to anchor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to tell us about being at Pearl Harbor before you headed out then? Well, it was only there three days, so you're not yeah. a whole lot you can do in three days. Yeah. Okay, uh, Ed, from uh, where did you go from Pearl Harbor? We left Pearl Harbor the 9th of November, and the 19th they started the invasion of Gilbert Islands, Trawala and Macon, and that atoll down there. I see. A little later on, uh, we have some maps uh, head that we'll uh, go over, and you can kind of show us where the Gilbert Islands is. What did you do with the Gilbert Islands? Well, we just covered them. We bombarded them with our plane, and then we covered the green landing. Mm -hmm. Our target really was Macon. It wasn't Trawala. We covered the Macon. Uh, the Enterprise, uh, big ship. Uh, tell us about it. Tell us the size and the number of men and officers. And tell well, us about it, it was commissioned as really as a battle cruiser, but they made it into an Enterprise, you know, an aircraft carrier. Back in 1936, I think. Uh, again, maybe a little off there. But she was 809 foot long. We carried about 3,000 personnel with right up 90 aircraft. I see. Yeah. And both fighter and dive bombers and torpedo. Right. Did you uh, have pretty good uh, food aboard the Enterprise? 
Well, most of them, yes. Most There's the certain days that I didn't go eat chow. And you yeah. know probably what them days were. <laughs> now, a ship of this type and this big uh, had a staff of medical doctors. Right. We had a, uh, it had a staff of dentists. Right. It had uh, stores where you could buy things. We got chip stores. Chip stores. And uh, had a key dump stand. There, I was just going to ask you. Yeah. Key dump stand, tell the, the audience what that is. Well, that's where you make ice cream. That's where you make ice cream. Buy ice cream. We can buy a gallon at a time. Right. You can buy uh, cigarettes uh, if you smoked and buy everything. Candy bars, pokey dump, you know, pokey bait. That's what candy bars is. Chewing gum. It was a small floating city, what? Right. We had a tailor shop, barber shop, laundry, anything a city's got. Right. We had. Right. Okay, now uh, we've talked about the ship. Uh, you, you had air cover off the Gilberts first. Tell us a little bit about that. Did you see uh, much yeah. of the enemy? Uh, we didn't see any enemy. Our boys caught them on the ground, and they, they, none come out at our task force. And I don't think any of them come out at the other task force. At this time, what did you do aboard ship? I was on a five-inch gun. Did you fire them? No. Were their guns being fired? Not off the ship, no. Not off the ship. We only fire when the uh, plane dive at it. We're so far out that yeah. they didn't have anything to reach us. Yeah. Were a lot of other ships around you? And there was uh, probably four to six carriers in that group. I see. And uh, maybe you, you've got, I, I imagine they was eight, because they had two groups. And four carriers in the group. They had two big carriers and two little carriers. CVL and CVs. CVs are the big ones, CVL are the little ones. What was the goal? What, what were the American forces trying to do at, at that time? What, taken islands uh, right. that were... We started the, the trip across the Pacific, one step at a time. And Gilbert's is first, if they look at the map, and it's a little south of the Marshalls. And, and then he went up the Marshalls, and then the next step. Nice. did one step at a time. Okay. What were some of the islands' names that the people watching this tape might be more familiar with? What were some of the islands there that you helped to, with the support cover on? Yeah. Well, Tarawa is, was the main island. It's the, that's where all the pictures has come from. Uh, Macon is another little island up above it. But that's the only two islands that I uh, know about that's in that chain. There's a lot of little bitty islands in that, but Tarawa is the big one. I see. That was one that was rough to take. That was rough. How did you know that? How, how did you find out if you were back with your planes, what was going on uh, on an island where an invasion had taken place? In communications. We have radios. You can pick up that. I see. see. Everything is run on an amphibious like that is run from the ship. Mm -hmm. Even though the general or the colonel would, who's ever got the, you know, the landing, uh, they're on land, but the uh, whole journey is all run from the amphibious ship. I see. The flag, right. in other words, is out there, and uh, you've got communication between all of them. What, where did you go from the Marshall Islands? We went to the, from the Gilbert, we went to the Marshalls, they had a hit and run rate. What do you mean, hit and run? Well, we went out there and bombed their airfields and uh, sneaked in on them. And then that night we had a nine, uh, uh, they said 11 and a half hours, but you know, that not seem long. But we had left all night with a night torpedo attack. You know, they'd come out and heckle us. We didn't fire any. Some of the other ships, you know, battleships and destroyers fired. Did you say this was at day or at night? Night. This was at night. We was retiring from, because we hit their airfields. I see. Yeah. And they were kind of mad. They were mad. They were were you anywhere near Guadalcanal? Is Guadalcanal anywhere near? No, no, no. That's way down. That's farther south. All right. Well, then where did you go from Tarawa? Well, Bacon. we went back to Pearl, and we left Pearl in January and went and took the marshals over. 
And what did you go back to Pearl for? Well, uh, we had to have some place to go to regroup. There was no other place to go at that time. I see. We then got resupplied, and uh, of course, they had to get the next operation ready. And so we left in January, and we took the marshals the next time. Took them. Uh, all the forces went in and, and wiped out the enemy that were on the rest right. of the Marshall Islands. After the Marshall Islands were secure, where did you go? Well, we anchored there in Madeira, and then we went on some hit and run raids out, you know, in the, the Pacific. We might go, our carrier group would go here, and another one go there, and another one go there. And then uh, Blue was out there, and, and I uh, got the list at home where we went, you know, step by step, but I didn't bring it with me. Uh -huh. But yeah, that major. Probably was uh, we went down and covered in uh, New Guinea. We covered Orlando. I see. That, that when the army went in there, we just blew fighter cover for them. And then we went back and in the Espirito Santa, and then we went north. And I imagine the, we took Guam and Saipan, and it was pretty close the next, you know, and biggest landing. What kind of planes? did you have on your aircraft carrier? We had F-6s. Of course, uh, F-6s was a Grumman. And we had SPDs, which is a die, Douglas dive bomber. And then we had uh, the torpedo plane, which, which is Grumman. And Were they manned by Navy personnel or all Marines? Right. All by Navy. Did Green, you have it? Marines had uh, Corsairs. They had Marine squadrons, but they was on Corsairs. How many Marines were on the Enterprise? About 90. About 90. We had a detachment of Marines. They uh, manned the port side 20s in General Quarters. I see. What, uh, okay, after Guam and uh, Saipan, uh, and you had air cover there, then where did you go? Well, we made a trip down the other side of the Philippines, down to Prince Indochina, down in there, you know, in Saigon all that places. Uh, Tokyo Road said, we don't know how you got in there, but we, you won't get out, but we never saw anything coming out. Did you ever hear Tokyo Rose on the radio? Oh, yeah. Did she sound like they said she did? Oh, yeah. She said she sunk us six times. Oh, she did? Yeah, she said we were sunk six times. Yeah, you fooled her, didn't she? She lied a lot. <laughs> yeah. Now, we listened to her quite a bit. Did you? Yeah. But she said, we don't know how you got in there, but you won't get out. And we come right out by Formosa and bombed her on the way out. And I see. Okay, then where did you go? I imagine it's about time for the Philippines. You know, we've been softening the Philippines up, you know, on them hit and run range. And mm -hmm. we hit them and hit them and hit them. And so we've got about that time. Of course, you know, we had that big carrier duel up off of Guam, you know. The Marianas. We talked about the Marianas turkey shoot. Yeah. Were you in that? Oh yeah. Tell us about it. Well, we they had about 400 Jap aircraft coming after us, but uh, they didn't get to us. But our fighters shot them down. And that one pilot says, "Well, I asked him, you got one?" He said, "Got one? Hell, I had to get in line to get a shot." <laughs> so you know, in the Navy, you always got to get in line for everything. That's right. I, I remember that, Ed. That, that's very true. But they were coming off their carriers, and they was aiming to land on Guam and refuel when they come after us. And our boys just monkeyed around out there and waited on them to come and shot them down to come. When we sunk some of their carriers, as I recall, we did. Now, would that have been done by aircraft off from the Enterprise or from bigger type aircraft, perhaps no, it, coming off ground? No, they were all carriers. See, after that turkey shoot, we chased the Jap carriers and launched an attack against them. And they were such a distance that they was coming back after dark and running out of fuel. And they, I don't remember where they sank in the Jap carriers, but they hit them. Mm -hmm. And we had people in the water all around us. Uh, back on the gun group, they brought us live rats, and every time a plane, the plane would go down to the side of the ship, 
Uh-huh. It did. And we threw over a life raft and a flare. And then we never lost power. Never lost the power. That's good. Did you see any uh, Japanese in the water that had uh, bailed out or that you picked up, uh, anybody picked up? or? We had six that floated through the task group on logs and the destroyer picked them up and brought them back to Fort Ellis because we were going back to Pearl Harbor. And we transferred them to Pearl Harbor. Yeah. Did then they had a Japanese pilot aboard, but I didn't, just, I didn't see him. I see. You took them back then and turned them over to the authorities at Pearl right. Harbor. That's a little different than they did with our pilots, isn't it? Right. We had so many of them executed. Right. So there was a humane uh, point of view for our troops there. You very seldom see any Navy prisoner of war. Right. But uh, they did you either got killed or they killed you. That's right. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I know there's some pilots got picked up and got executed off the other ships. Well, where did you go from there then, Ed? Well, we probably went uh, outside and hit and run raid. Now, like I say, I can't remember all the dates, but the next major thing was probably people with you. Oh, yes. But uh, uh, so you're talking about a little time between there and up there. Like we was up there and salted them up two or three times. And Did you see, were you close enough to see the island of Iwo Jima? No. You were, you were too far back. The only island I really saw was Philippines. Uh, one time we had a carrier strike against Manila and they was coming back out of fuel because they went over the mountains from the other side and uh, they detached us to go in and pick them up. And, we was in there with two destroyers, and we picked, landed all we could, and we ended up didn't have no protection because destroyers were picking up power out of the water. But uh, that's the only island that really I got to see outside of after Guam. We went into Saipan once and anchored. And were there uh, when you got ready then to to go after uh, Iwo Jima? Uh, were there a, large number of uh, naval ships in that, working on that? You probably never saw a task group as big as we had. What kind of ships were out there? Well, they had uh, each carrier group had four carriers in it, and they were 16 carriers, and they were all the new battleships. Uh, we generally operated with two battleships and Two or three cruisers and about 15 destroyer, destroyers in each group. But then you've got all your other outfit running around. And one time on a, we were refueling and there was about 100 ships going around the circle on the equator refueling. I see. Now, was the Enterprise the flagship? Uh, they, no. It wasn't. Not, not the last of the war now. They was earlier, but not the last of the war. Mm -hmm. but, uh, All they kept his on the South Dakota, and he had his flag out there, and Spruance's journey was on a carrier. I see. Uh, was Spruance, uh, what carrier was he on? Well, it did depends. It didn't make any difference. He was on the Bunker Hill when he got blew out. And, but uh, see, Spruance and Mincher, and them changed off. It just depends who was in command, what task force he was on. We had five and four or three. And when they, we would change commanders, and all we would do is just change five to three, so we wouldn't have anything else to do. Yeah. I believe at this time, Ed, we will take a short pause. Okay. We're back with you here, and uh, we're standing up now, and have uh, Ed Fenway that's going to point out uh, some of the islands and where some of these battles took place. We're going to be reviewing a little bit some of the information. And Ed, if you will, if you will start out uh, just like we did there a few moments ago and show us where these islands are, and then anything else that you may think of uh, to tell the group. Well, here's the Phil. Here's the Hawaiian Islands, and we went down here and took Tarawa. Was the first action. And from Tarawa, we went to the Marshall and had a hit-and-run raid, hit their airfields, 
and then we sneaked out on them. We had an 11 and a half hour night torpedo attack against it, and then we went back to Hawaii. Then a month later, we went down and took the marshals over. And instead of going back to the Hawaii, we anchored in a material down here, which is a beautiful anchorage. There was no gaps on that. It was a perfect lagoon, big. When you get a whole fleet in there, you know it's big. Mm -hmm. And so there on, while we just hit, had hit and run raids all over the place, we had here and here. What, here. Is, what is this here? What? what That's uh, Marianas. That's the Marianas. They're long side pan. And we hit blue. And then we, after we took this over, while we anchored out of Ulithi, and I couldn't find Ulithi on this map. Is it right in that general area? Oh, yeah. there it is, right there. I see. And there's where we had the fleet anchorage. Uh huh. And there on we run the rest of the war from there. I so see. We went to the Philippines. Whereabouts were you uh, working? Uh, all around the Philippines? Or? Well, most generally we run uh, Manila. See, they only landed in two places the Don and uh, Mindanao, Minda, what do you call it, Mindanao? Or where Mindanao. Are they? Because they didn't take every island. They just went. And we hit them off and on for the last all four months before they invaded. Maybe longer than that. We'd go in and maybe just an individual air group would go in. Because what we'd do, when we had a major operation, we had all four groups together. But when we were going out, just striking by each air group, air group had journey had four carriers would split up and they'd go here and we'd go there and you know, other places. You know. We went down here and covered the landing in Hollandia. In where? Time. Down here in New Guinea. Oh yeah. I can't find Hollandia, but it's down there someplace. Your carrier moved around a lot, didn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah, we moved around. We went in here and hit all these at one time. Come back by the promotion. And then they got ready for Iwo Jima. Mm -hmm. That's up here. Mm -hmm. Now, to back there. up just a little bit, Ed, you, you mentioned uh, an island here that had considerable destruction on it. Well, uh, uh, anyway, if you want to go back further, you want to you know, talk about that. After the marshals, uh, the Jap had a base called Truck. I remember that reading about that. And that was supposed to bend their Pearl Harbor. And we went down and struck that and that was everybody was nervous because they were supposed to be like our Pearl Harbor. They had all kinds of aircraft, and they went down and blew that off the map. I see. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't even have any engagement. They got their planes on the ground, and what got up was shot down, and they sank all their ships. And Is that the island you were talking about? It was just leveled? Well, no palm no, trees or uh, that was up here at the Marshall. You go up here. At uh, Guadalupe and them two islands right up in there, them little narrow islands, they're not very wide, and there was no palm trees left on them. Mm -hmm. The bombardment from the battleships and cruisers just, mm -hmm. and it still didn't get the Japs out. And they had to go in big yeah. The, the uh, when a battleship fired near you, did you have some of them near you when they fired? No. They weren't too near you. I never saw a battleship fire the main batteries. I see. We used them for anti-aircraft. The old battleship bombarded the beaches. I see. And the cruisers. Mm -hmm. Our battleship never fired a salvo. Mm -hmm. Now, show us where Iwo Jima is now, which I'm sure uh, that we're all familiar with. Right there in Iwo Jima. Okay. There's all them islands right there. Here's Chickajima and Hawajima and all the others. There's a whole bunch of them Jimas. Yeah. Where did you go from, uh, we're going to be backing up a little, where uh, where did you go from Iwo Jima then, Ed? Well, uh, Okinawa was the All right. next big. Now, we went to Japan first. Now, we went up there and hit, hit Japan. Because okay. we had to get part of the planes away from Okinawa, you know. I see. We destroyed all the planes we yeah. could. Is there anything else on the maps here that we need to show the people, you think? No. Could there, that, we got that. Now, we got hit three times the last three months we were there. Yeah. There. Okay, let's let's sit down now, Ed. Uh, if you don't mind, then we'll uh, continue here. Uh, let's back up just a little bit more. Okay. We'll 
to Iwo Jima, uh, which uh, history shows us was a, uh, a very serious battle for us, which was hard for us to win. Uh, were you aware that uh, it was rough going for the Marines right. ashore? How did you know this? Well, uh, we got radio com you know, communications. And they left us there when the fleet went on north to track Japan. They let us there with the night air group on, and we covered them day and night. Whenever they need fire cover, while well, we had planes over the island all the time for 130 some straight hours. I see. And that's a lot of aircraft to be there. We're going to be talking about it in a little while, but at uh, Iwo Jima, had you seen any? Uh, what was called a kamikazes yet? Right. Had we saw them? them from the Philippines on. From the Philippines on. They started at the Philippines. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but you really didn't have uh, real close encounters, uh, hits and so forth, until you got to Okinawa? No, we had them before. You had we them had before, but we shot them down. What, what, what was a kamikaze? Well, that was just a pilot went up and uh, the only thing you're going to do is crash into the deck. Were they young kids? That uh, starting out, they wasn't. You know, some of them experienced, but the last of the war, they were just young. All they had know to do was take off and fly. They didn't know anything about combat. Or they just go straight, and that's why so many of them got shot down with their aircraft. Because they didn't have to know how to maneuver the plane. Right. Okay. But they, they almost, you know, after Midway and and the Mariana, see, they lost all their first line pilots. I see. You just don't uh, keep on with your first line pilots. Yeah. Or, now we, you know, we had a program going where we kept them out there, going out all the time. But, uh, you know, Japanese was out of aircraft and you just don't have the training and you just don't do that overnight. It yeah. takes a long while. When we were up to the map there a while ago, Ed, you mentioned that uh, that you went over off the coast of Japan before you came back to Okinawa. Uh, what what was the purpose? What why, what did the admirals? Uh, what was the idea behind that? The whole journey was hit to airfields on Japan itself. Right, because right. well, you know Okinawa and Japan is not too far off, no. and uh, we hit their airfields quite a bit. And that took out a lot of aircraft that didn't, couldn't come down and get us. I see. But that was the main reason. See, the month before that, we was up in that China Sea up there, and when the Franklin got rid of that, and Franklin, that was off Okinawa? No, that was off in Japan proper. Yeah, Franklin. What what happened there? Well, uh, she had her planes on deck ready to go out on strike, and uh, stood side plane come down and crashed on deck. It just blew up and blew up and blew up. Did you see that happen? It's about nine miles away. About nine miles away. Did uh, looked out of two glasses. Did it, was there a lot of casualties right. from that? And somebody said seven hundred and some, if I remember right. And she uh, was laid dead in the water, and the Pittsburgh towed her part of that day. And we had the Alaska and Guam, which was two battle cruisers with us. And they went over and one of them got on each side of her for an aircraft protection. Mm -hmm. Was uh, when a ship like close to you like that got hit, did this cause uh, a lot of uh, panic or turmoil aboard your ship? No. No. But we saw so much of it. It, uh, it wasn't talked about. That's what business went on, right? You so to speak, as usual. You had to do your duty. Uh, you had to watch for other aircraft, and it, uh, with no panic or, of course, you felt bad. Sure, now, don't get me wrong, but I mean, uh, it was just no panic whatsoever. Yeah. Well, uh, we're back to Okinawa now, which we pointed out on the map a while ago, Ed. Uh, did you? Were you at Buckner Bay there, or all around the island? Just around. Uh, what did you do there? We just covered the landings and took care of the suicide plane that was coming down. Did you see a lot of suicide planes? Saw a lot of suicide planes. When, when you say a lot, would that have been 
four or five? Well, it depends on what they, they was talking about. Uh, some days there was several and some days they wasn't. Now, the morning when we got hit, uh, there was 60 coming out and only one got through. So you see how good our air cover was. Right. So, uh, but you know, when you take a bunch of planes and come out and uh, they scatter, and it's awful hard to get them all. A little later on, uh, we'll be showing, uh, going over some pictures uh, of the Kamikaze coming in. Uh, before we do that, uh, did you see the, actually see the Kamikaze coming in? Right. I saw him in the clouds before they, he popped through. He was going up our starboard side, and he was a low overcast, and he had openings in the clouds, and you could just barely see him sneaking through, and we had two five-inch shooting at him from our ship. The only gun in the task group was far. We fired 59 rounds with five-inch. He got about 5.30, and he did come out of the clouds and come right down. What were you doing at the time that he was in his dive and coming towards the ship? Sitting there watching him. You, in other words, you didn't have a duty I just went up to relieve, uh, relieve a fellow on the phones. So we took turns you know, up in the uh, defense act with where I was at. Were they throwing a lot of uh, stuff at him? Oh, they threw a little bit, but like I say, he'd come out of the overcast and uh, you didn't have time to throw too much. I see. You threw a little 40 and 20, but that was just about it. Yeah. Now, you were talking, I believe, uh, a few moments ago that uh, this was probably an experienced pilot who had, uh, was going to make this so-called supreme sacrifice. He was the squadron leader. He was the squadron leader. Uh, they got his jacket, his call card, his personal letter, his cherry blossom emblem, which the kamikaze had, you know. And what happened at the, what, what act, when he hit, was there, was it, Loud explosion, or firefly, uh, what happened? It was a deep thud. A deep thud. Because the bomb went off on the fourth day. I see. You go in with a, what, say a second safety fuse setting or wherever you want. The bomb went off on the fourth day. Okay. Did and it just, just boom. Yeah. It did the thud. All right, on a tragedy like this, was there considerable panic and turmoil on no, the Enterprise? No. Everybody knew what his job Everybody was? Everybody knew what his job was. The, the boys on 20 millimeter were, went in right between them. They were still strapped in their guns and the firefighters brought their hoses up there and the hangar deck crew brought theirs up there. Because you got a job to do. That's, you do it. How about casualties from this tragedy? We lost 16 killed. Seven of them drowned aboard blow decks. Why, why did they drown? What? They tried to come back up through, and uh, our armor deck was the fourth deck, and we had to cut the deck to get down in. I mean, if they'd stayed down on the seventh deck and locked in, they'd have been alive, but they tried to come up through. Did you lose some friends uh, that were no. among those 16? No. You were fortunate there. Uh, you said now when it hit, and you heard this thud. You felt it. You felt it. Right. In other words, a ship that big, it right. It, it really hit it. What did you What did you have to do after the impact? Did you help? Uh, did you help? Not to save anyone, put out fire, or no, no. We had crews for that. I, I didn't do a thing until the fire was out and. Uh, that after we got in the morning and that afternoon because I was in fire control mm -hmm. and we went up to see in the first class fire control and went up to see if we could get the power to the five inch guns which we didn't think you know they could but we had to go check them out mm -hmm. and we went out and checked them out and we couldn't yeah. get power to them. Now had the Enterprise been hit before by a kamikaze but not as severely? Yes we got one in and a month before on the side of the ship. And that was, you talk about a you know, boom or something, uh, that we were turning hard port and it hit us in the side when the bomb went off and threw it sideways. I see. And that would feel that one more than what the direct hit was. I see. Because 
you throw a big chip like that sideways. Mm -hmm. Did uh, either one of those uh, impacts uh, impair the uh, communication system, uh, the PA system, or anything aboard the ship? All it took out was the electrical part to the guns up front. I see. Uh, so you've got more than one line running in them ships. That's the only thing we lost was power to the guns. Mm -hmm. Now you seem to know a little bit about the uh, the pilot that was uh, Jap pilot that that came in at Kamikaze. Uh, being in a bomb and so forth, how were they able to really locate enough uh, of the crash to identify him, or how was that possible? Well, he was just over in the hangar to or the elevator pit with his engine. And uh, when they put the bar out, well, they had it under control in 17 minutes out in 23. And they did pour water in on, you know, and yeah. there was body, and they buried him when we buried our dead. I see. He got the same burial that... Was he an got. officer? Yeah. I see. That, he was squadron leader, I don't remember, or his lieutenant or, you know, Saturday evening post had a real good story about yeah. him in there. Is there anything else you want to tell us about uh, this Kamikaze direct hit that you had? Is there anything else that would be of interest to the people? I always thought that uh, one of the kids from Wayland, the Woody Ferguson the guy, he left hand the ball. From that, right. from this one last one you were talking about. Is he still living? Yeah. Yeah, written down also, Bill. Do you ever see him? Yes. And it took me 16 years to find out what happened. And I never did ask him, and you know, and he was really, I don't know how you want to explain it, he was, he didn't want to talk about it. Yeah, well, I can understand. And, because uh, he didn't want to be in the Navy, and he didn't want, he wanted to be a storekeeper, and he was on a five-inch gun. So, about 16 years later, he was sitting up my house one night, about 2 o'clock in the morning, and he told me what happened. I see. When he got that hit, he went in right between the two five-inch forward, which is he was on the port side. And uh, of course the ammunition, you know, the powder locker and stuff. They had about six guys bail out over the side. But he went to the catwalk to get out of the gun group, and he didn't have a left hand. And he said that's the first thing that he knew, that he lost his hand. For goodness sake. He reached for the catwalk, and he went up to folks so and the medics took care of him. And then the next day they transferred him to the hospital ship which is in that picture. And I went up and helped swing him in the slings and he didn't re even remember me being up there. I see. Because they had him, you know, out. But he, he beat us back to states. Now, I, now after you're hit there then were you out of commission and you had to come back? No. Down? What did you do then? Well, we left, but we could still run 85% of frequency. Could we, couldn't, we couldn't have launched, but we could catapult it. I see. Our two catapults were forward of that. We could pass, and we could land it. The low we lost was the forward elevator, and the flight deck was up the middle. But we'd been out there two years, and it was time to come back. You were on your way back. I believe at this time we'll pause for a moment. A little bit about friendly fire. Uh, which we've heard uh, quite a lot about uh, during the Persian Gulf crisis. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about the friendly fire experience that you had in the Navy? Now, we lost several boys aboard ship from anti-aircraft bar from the other ships. And what it is, a, a Jap plane comes through the task group and everybody's shooting at them. And then hits off the water and bounce. And when you've got a task force out there and you got four carriers in the middle of the battleships and destroyers and cruisers and everybody's farm, you've got a lot of fire coming through there and, and it's impossible to miss. So we've had a lot of casualties. And then we got six killed and when a destroyer on the horizon hit one of our quad forties with a five inch. So uh, it's nothing unusual to have friendly fire casualties. I see. Yeah. Now, today, today's Navy you wouldn't have because the planes don't get in that close. But uh, the old Navy, you had to have it. 
and uh, the land forces, they had it too. We yeah. got our artillery, you know, on board lines and somebody didn't cooperate, so we... What about that B-25 you told about? Well, uh, we had up the marshals and it was a formation of B-25s that bombed the marshals and they come through and they come over the right and, and our task group and uh, we had one five inch far two rounds and shot one of them down. I hate to say it, but we got him. Yeah, yeah. They don't they, take a chance. They lost one man. But that time we, the boys was off the old, you know, the ship had been out there first. And they had an order they could shoot on sight. And then on out by gun boss get permission to shoot. He didn't shoot up the gun boss said which took care of that. But then a couple times we was under attack of suicide planes and twice we shot down our own fighters coming down through the formation. Now, we didn't lose the pilot, but we shot both down. Because of, when we're under attack, we've got a 10 mile radius that we shoot at. And anybody in that 10 mile radius is fair game. But these two pilots followed the jet planes down through the task group and shot them both down. Were were they doing the right thing? Were they in the, an area they shouldn't have been? Yeah, they wouldn't. Have. They was inside the ten mile limit. I see. They, you've got a ten mile limit, and uh, could, you know, if planes got coming in, you just don't take a chance. So, uh, but we didn't lose either pilot. We got them. Well, that's good. And they crashed. Also, Ed, uh, on uh, guns, uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, the various kinds of guns and the sizes of them and uh, ak, ak guns and things like that. that uh, tell us a little more about that. Well, we had eight 538s, which is dual purpose. They're for bombardment beach or any aircraft or. And we had 40 barrels of 40, which is Navy uses 25 millimeters to an inch, so it's almost not quite two inch, which is one of the best close range anti-aircraft fire you got, we had at that time. Then the 20 millimeters, which is just less than an inch. They're about that bad. I've got, I've got some of them on them. And they've got a detonator in them uh, where they go off and they hit something and they explode. What would you shoot at a kamikaze with? What what type of everything we had? Through through the book at it. We threw the kitchen sink if we could. Right. Now that one that hit us, no. But as you see in these pictures when we show them, like there's plenty of room to shoot. Now, let's uh, let's go to the pictures uh, in just a moment here and uh, take a look at them. But uh, you know it's. It depends on the overcast and stuff. Now, now five inch had a range of nine miles, and we opened part seven and a half miles. For the time the projectile gets out there, the plane's coming this way, and it's not that far. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the pictures now, Ed. I'll try to hold them here, and uh, we have uh, eight or ten of them to show them. And if you can point out, uh, so they can. Right there is a suicide plane that's been hit by five inch. It is is five inch. The big stuff's five inch. And the little stuff you can't see them in the picture, but it's forty millimeter. Now here's your five inch that we're talking about friendly fire. See what goes up has to come down. Well, we might stop a moment here. What are we looking at now? Uh, we're looking at a suicide plane, a kamikaze diving. Okay. Who took these pictures? Well, one of the ships out there, I couldn't tell you who took them. Uh, you were pretty fortunate to be able to get these pictures. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they was in our dog. When they, they, when they scrapped the ship, while well, we got all that stuff out of the log and stuff. And, uh, that's why we got them. I see. Are you ready for the next one, Ed? That's just another picture of that one. See, when you're coming down closer, it, this same picture. But this is five inch shells that's coming down. Is this your ship for the no, you see there? Uh, that's a destroyer. That's a destroyer. See here? OK. 
okay? And there's where he hits. He hits the destroyer. No, he hits in the water. He hits in the water. He's been shot now. Yeah, he's on the other side. See, this is a router screen. And we've got a, a carrier on the inside. And you can see the five inch shells are, are dissipating. And what do we have here? Here's another one. Here's the second one. See, he's been shot down. And these are all five inch bursts. He probably come from this side, as you can see. But here's where most of them. Now these here is somebody didn't have a good range. Yeah. What are, what's this over here and right here? Well, they're probably two destroyers on the outer screen. Okay. See they see that near has been farmed. You see the smoke there? Mm -hmm. That near too. Mm -hmm. see the smoke. They're you, probably using single mount five inch. Mm -hmm. Do you remember approximately what date this would have taken place? May the fourteenth, nineteen forty five. Morning or afternoon? Morning. Is that when the Jap kamikazes hit in the morning? Well, they hit any time they get through. But most generally they come out early in the morning. Or late in the evening. So they I, inter interrupt your supper, you know. Well, I, I, I was just going to ask you about that. Didn't they like to come in uh, when you were in the uh, Gidunks line? A lot of the times when they were lined up for ice cream? Well, they didn't come in for that, but uh, our ship, when we went uh, like a like this, we would be in general quarters. We would not be any place else but general quarters. When we went in on engagement, we stayed in general quarters all day. Mm -hmm. And my ship went to condition two, and, and there's nothing coming. That's what happened to Bunker Hill. She was in condition two, and and that's only all the guns manned by half the crew. And you just can't do that. We stayed in condition one all the time. Were you able to eat? Uh, were you able to go to the well, mess? They, they bring it up to us. Brought, brought to yeah, they probably brought our new line up to us. So, I haven't explained what general quarters and condition one and condition two. Yeah. No, general, general quarters, what does that mean? That's when the whole ship is tied down for battle station. When they blow general quarters, you've got three minutes to clear, and then the hatches are locked, and then if you want to get out, you've got to go through the hatch. Which they got manholes, you know, you can go up through. And condition one? Condition one is the uh, same thing, that's your own quarter. Condition two is half the gun man, uh, the other, other half is not the crew. Uh, torpedo defense, which we went to a lot, was the gunnery department and uh, repair department. We go. And that's the only one. A lot of times they'd blow torpedo defense and then they'd blow general quarters later and that would the gunnery department and repair department is already on and then the rest of the ship and you don't get in the way. So it just depends on what you want to do. And here's another kamikaze. Oh yes. These are all five inch. Probably come in this way and they got him up here. And there he splashes. Now that's probably a five inch right there. Hit Hit men water. He's up here, see. Mm -hmm. This is the trail where he came down. So what goes up has to come down. Right. Now what do we have? Here's the one diving on the Essex class. It went off. Suicide plane. That's an Essex class. Now, I don't know which one that is, but it's an exit class. Carrier. Carrier. Is this somewhere near where oh, you, no. you were? Yeah. See, the Bunker Hill got hit right beside us, so I don't know who was with us. Uh, I don't remember. Now, is this when the Franklin got hit? No, we no, talked no, about no. Franklin's a good ways off. That was a yeah. while ago. All right. There. Where it missed the Franklin, or it missed that one. They brought either in or five inch burst, and they feed back in here a little bit or 40 millimeter burst. Air is full of fire, isn't it? It is. Now you can see why when you shoot through a task force, what do you see? And you're friendly fire, you know. But that plane went down under here, is why they would just keep peppering it. Still keep coming in, wouldn't they? 
Now there's the suicide plane that hit us. That's a zero. There's a bomb, about 550 pound bomb right there. That's the one that did it. That's the one that did it. This is the stop on a propeller? That's a propeller. My, my. Dude, what color was the plane? Don't ask me. Don't ask me, but I'll bet it was green. It was green. I'll bet it was green. To blend in with the... Uh... They have a brick. Because I've got pictures of that one that hits the side. I've got pieces of that one. And it was green. But you don't have time to look see what color it is. What yeah, the model about. had on. <laughs> and there he is winging over. Here's our yard arm sticking up here. And the guy that took the pictures is on a catwalk beside the island strip. And he brought her down and winged her over and hit right in the middle of the flight deck. Well, how far away from the ship was he when he winged her over there? I wouldn't have any idea. He was, I pulled 150, 200 foot above the ship. Oh, the he come down, he winged over like this and went straight down in it. But he could fly. He wasn't one of them kids that didn't know how to fly. Okay, what do we have here? There's our L, part of our elevator sticking up here in the air. You mean off your ship? Yeah. It went in and blew out our elevator. Just blew the whole thing out. Part of it went on deck and they figured out to be about 15 tons, 400 feet in the air. My goodness. Did you see this actual? Did you see it? Uh, no, I was back the album structure. You were back of it and couldn't see it. When he winged over, I was on the deck. You don't stand up. I was down. I was behind that splinter shield. And ain't nobody stands up and watches to see what he's going to hit. Once he comes in, when he gets so far, everybody's down. The only one that's up is the gunners. Mm -hmm. Even though that flare shield is only a quarter of an inch, maybe, but uh, it's better than nothing. Like say you. Yeah. yeah. All right. Never shot this right after it. You know, the elevator is probably already gone. And that may be it down there. I don't know. Were you, you still in the water at this time? Oh, yeah. You can see, you, they wasn't much any aircraft bar. Not now. They did no. their forties back here, but they wasn't very many. So nobody helped us out. Now, see, this was taken off another carrier. Here's the plane back on the flag, back out like that. Mm -hmm. Now, there she's on the bar. This happened right after because we had the bar under control in 17 minutes out in 23. I'm looking at it upside yeah, down. Can uh, you see the outline of the ship there? Yeah, right up in here. Can you point right. about where you were? Well, here's the fan tail and here's this. Mm -hmm. and I was right about in here. I see. So there's the yard arm up there. See the radar? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, in the next picture, I can tell you where I'm at. Now, here's after the bar put up it. Flight deck is ruptured right here. And the hangar the uh, elevator is right here. See, up here is a catapult. See, we could still catapult. That plane's all right. Up from the catapult, because we always kept two planes on the catapult. Blew out all over wing here. Just blew them out. You know, with concussion. Uh -huh. And that's why we lost 16 people, because the ones on the hangar deck got killed by the concussion. Uh -huh. And I was right there, between that stack and that director, right there, what's called the fence aft. Mm -hmm. See, here's 20 millimeters wrong here. 20 millimeter gun. Yeah. And here are these two quad 40s that got blew out with that five inch it hit us. Right here. What do you mean, five inch that hit you? One of the destroyers hit us with a five inch. Oh, and I'm we from the and blew out two quad 40s. Surveyed, I think, killed six and surveyed three out of both crews. Now what are we at? Well, here's the hospital ship the next day taking our wounded off. I don't remember how many we had wounded, but they took all the serious wounded off. And there's a destroyer taking a flag off. 
Bruns had to change flagship again. He was on there when it hit, and then he got off. Yeah, he didn't want to go back to States. Why, you know when? Why would he want to come back to States? Yeah, probably not. Okay, I think we're back where we started from now. But that was north of Okinawa, about 75 miles off of Kyushu. I see. Southern tip of Japan. Yeah. At this time, we'll take a short pause. The uh, accomplishments of the Enterprise uh, during its period in World War II. Well, she had 911 aircraft shot down, 90 some ships sank, which, by the way, she sank one of at least one of every type the Japs had. That's carrier battleships on down. And it, I wouldn't have the least idea how many she damaged. But that's uh, the main things. I see. Did you ever see any submarines while you were out there? No, but we had submarine alerts, and uh, they, several times they said there was torpedoes coming through the task group, but uh, I never saw any. I see. Well, they called her what, the Fighting E? Or the Big, Big E? Big, Big E. And we've heard a lot about that over Big. the years. Well, can you think of anything else that uh, we might not have uh, covered, Ed, to make this complete? Well, I don't know. That uh, just about everything I know of. Uh, Morning of this, I really enjoyed my two years aboard it. Uh, I can't think of any place that I would better have been than there. No, it was. I had to be someplace. Yeah, it was. It was a good ship. Uh, Ed, uh, as we close up here now, uh, how do you spell your last name? F E N D L E Y. Fendley. Fendley. Edward Fenley. Okay. Well, and by the way, we never had fresh water for ship either. We had fresh water all the time. Right. That was that was one good thing about the Navy. You had fresh water and showers. Well, uh, and, uh, I played ball on the ship basketball team, and we went over to Lexington to play, and they wouldn't even let us take a fresh water shower. So they had water racing. The so ship never had water racing. Salt water showers weren't too good. No. And I could take three showers a day and they wouldn't say a word. And in hot weather, I'd take three a day a lot of time. When I had a working party and then I had to go on watch. Well, Ed, I want what to about, think. What about recreation? Has he said anything about recreation on the board? Well, we played basketball. Uh, we played ship. We was only defeated once in the whole time we was out there. One basketball game. We beat everybody up. Our boxing team we never lost a smoker. But that, that's really about the only thing we had. Uh, we had footballs and stuff, but you know, you play catch and baseballs. Uh, coming back to state that we got blew out, we probably lost more basketball over the side than most of these colleges have got. Because we played a, two tournaments. We played a round robin tournament, a division, then we played a, the ship's team against the ship's officers and the air group officers. So we lost a lot of battle, or a lot of basketball. Have you ever tried to shoot one of that ships going like this, and you shoot, and it falls this way, and you go the other way, and it goes over? You've got to learn to shoot with the roll. And you can do it. You can do it. You also mentioned the Applejack. <laughs> oh, yeah. We did have a few of that. Uh, we made some raisin jack, and then we had a couple of good stills, and uh, the boys have to have their liquor. And I'd say that them Marines had some over there in Persian Gulf, too, and if you know. But, you know, you take American Armed First Services, they're going to have that. Some way. Some way. Have. I don't care how. Yeah. And uh, one, I'm just thinking of one other thing here before we close. Did you ever have Shore Liberty? Any place uh, in your travels with the Big E? Pearl Harbor. That's Pearl Harbor. We'd go in there. I was in there in December, January, December, December, January. We come back in June and July. We come back in December, January, and June and July. I was in there four times. And we had one every four day liberty. And it was day liberty. You couldn't have a night of liberty else you had a permanent battery. And when there's 10,000 sailors on Lee at Liberty, would you have one day? 
know, that's a big place. But I did go over to Mogmog once. That's a new Lithy. That's uh, you can go over and have three cans of hot beer. Or it's cold when you got it, but it's so hot out there before you drank it. It was hot. But I only went over once because. How'd you get there? Whale boat. You get the whale boat and they take you over there. And uh, like our boxing team went over there and uh, they got the devil beat out of them. So, yeah. But I went down and found a lot of shells on the beach. And I stole every one of them. That, that's what happens. I had them in my helmet up on the flight deck because I was on a runner director there at the last one. I was on the flight engine. We controlled the gun in the local. And my helmet was hanging on the flight deck with my, uh, my race blue clothing that I was supposed to wear, which I didn't. But uh, somebody stole them. But it was a nice time for Chip. I uh, really. Look back on them, they wouldn't get shot at once in a while. It has been a nice pleasure cruise. That's right. It sure would. Ed, I want to thank you for taking the time away from your family and being with us here today for this very interesting uh, interview. Thank you very much.